Whether you are a complete beginner or you are looking for inspiration for your next projects, then look no further, as these are eight things you can mess around with in Adobe After Effects. Number one, it can animate. What a revelation. I know, you can go back to your seats now. You need to recover after the manner in which I just blew your mind. <laughs> Jokes aside though. The primary function of Adobe After Effects is video editing, as well as special effects, with motion graphics being extremely easy to achieve with this program as well. But did you know that you can also traditionally animate with it? As in, draw up individual frames and create an animation that way. Although it's not the most optimized nor the easiest to use, you can still find use for it if the work isn't too involved or complicated. If we enter the realm of animating things like action scenes and there are definitely better alternatives. However, there is something that After Effects is able to do extremely well, and that is rotoscoping. The sheer number of filters and surprisingly accurate paint tool will make tracing your subjects extremely easy. And then whether you draw up every single frame or use interpolation is up to you. There is no fill tool, so you will have to get creative with your shape tools for your colors, but the results will surprise you, since you can make footage clearer by messing around with contrast and take some creative liberties with the paint tool. With that out of the way, let me tell you about some very useful hacks, as kids call them these days, to make your post-production work as swift as possible. Number 2. Easy rest. Oh, that was exhausting. Having to redo your work is never fun. Having to tediously smash Ctrl Z to get back to a workable point is even more annoying. But worry not, as you can easily reset your transform properties by simply double clicking on tools. Now I can't explain the logic behind some of the selected tools, but to make it quick, the selection tool will reset the scale of your subject matter, the rotation tool will reset rotation, and the pen behind will reset the anchor points. I don't know why either, just, just let's move on. Number three, easy reset, the sequel. That's number three. That's also number two. I'm learning things from Hollywood. Speaking of redoing work, sometimes nothing works and you just have to press the hard reset button. And the easiest way to do that is to select all your layers and press control or command shift plus E. It's less work so that later you'd have to do more work but at least you won't be meshing undo or re-importing all your footage in the case you noticed something early in the timeline a little far too late. Number four, like father, like son. Layers are a big part of working on any digital media software. They are one of the reasons the medium is as efficient and forgiving as it is. But sometimes you have to put so much effort into figuring out how to handle a single asset and you don't want to do it all over again onto other assets placed on other layers. That's where parent layers come into play. You can press shift and pick whip a layer to parent it and apply all modifications including position, scale, rotation, and anchor point to that new child layer. So now the child will be in the exact same position as the parent layer in the composition panel. Isn't that what all parents wish we would be? Too real, too real. Number five. I'm sure everybody will agree. Math is overrated. Stop. Stop worrying about individually over planning your keyframes. I mean, most of the time people just do eyeball it and that tends to work. But if you are planning to add effects and animations that are very timing sensitive, then you don't have to zoom into your timeline and count up those precious fractions of a second individually. You can just alt and then click on the two keyframes in succession and voila, a true time saver. A comedic genius, I know. But we should not dwell on this and rather we should move on into some fun mask ideas you can mess around with to spice up your next project. So, number six, track your masks. That's actually pretty relevant to real life as well. Don't mix up your masks, kids. But you can track your masks throughout the entirety of your footage. You probably knew that already as masks are part of the After Effects video editing fundamentals package. But the mask tracking feature in particular is very unique as it allows you to adjust the alignment and shape of a single mask throughout the entire length of your footage, which means any effect applied to said mask will apply to the selected area. So it's less work in the long haul and it means you don't have to mask the same subject multiple times throughout the pipeline, making your work seem a lot more consistent as well while doing less, which is the point. Number seven, movie footage. 
Now everyone is aware that you can move your mask, but did you know that you can also move the footage behind your mask? The key is why. No, no, no it's not the WH question why, it's, it's why, as in the key you have to press in your keyboard is letter Y. Uh, that got confusing. You simply need to press Y on your keyboard after selecting your footage to move it behind any designated mask. That means you can also replace the footage behind said mask after the fact so you can create some highly surreal scenes. Combine that with mask tracking and I can't even begin to imagine the possibilities. No, I, I, I actually like can't. I lost the ability to imagine. Please help. Number 8. It's a party! A shape party. You know you can make shapes. You know you can make masks. A mask is made if you draw a shape on selected footage and a shape is made if you don't select anything. But there is a little button next to your tool create shape called tool create mask. So you can create a mask on top of a shape. Now what can that possibly be useful for? If you are working with footage then you might not be able to think of any use cases. But if you are animating from scratch it can actually be very useful to apply specific effects onto specific areas of your shapes and assets again without having to go through the hassle of individually animating that effect onto a separate shape. It can create spotlights, glitches, and many more fun effects that way. The sky is literally the limit. So, what was the purpose of this? Well, to make your life a little easier, we hope, it can be very intimidating to get started on a new program, feeling completely lost in the infinite sea of possibilities, and seeing a two-hour-long beginner's guide or looking for the user manual. Oh, the dreaded user manual. Does not ease the anxiety either. Therefore, we tried to compile a little list of hacks that can get you started as an absolute beginner, or make your life a little easier if you are a bit more experienced. Each one of these tips are either meant to give you an idea, you can jumpstart your project with, or to tell you, it's okay to mess up, there is always a try again and make it better button. Doesn't make it any easier on the mental though. So go out there and make art, darn it. Don't be afraid. And that signals the end. We hope you learned a little something from this, and if you have any further thoughts or inquiries, then feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, we'll catch you next time. Take care.